Gypsy Rose, that's who I want to talk about. Um, just because I've been following her story for a bit. I'm like, I don't know. Yes, I, I do know of Gypsy Rose. She and her boyfriend killed her alleged abusive mother. Yeah, and I mean, she was convicted of this. Her boyfriend is serving, I don't know what kind of sentence, a life sentence. I don't know, a really long sentence. She's been released from jail. So she was actually convicted of it. So it wasn't allegedly kill oh well her alleged abuse of a mother but i think they determined in the trial that her mother was abusive so i don't think that was alleged i think it was to what extent but i think it was it was determined that her mother was abusive and so basically from if you don't know the story this well she's a grown woman now but as a young child her mother can treated her as if she was ill like you know like that munchen tau disease <laughs> or it's called now factitious disorder imposed on another or something like that well her mother made the child gypsy gypsy's mother i forget her name dd Dee dd Dee Dee blanchard made gypsy blanchard believe that she or believe that she was sick by saying that she i, I think they went from leukemia to this to another disease to that to cancer to all kinds of things and she kept going to the doctor and saying she's sick. And then she would doctor jump, right? So she would go to one doctor and get a diagnosis and get medication. And she did all this for supposedly the attention. The mother, Dee Dee, did this for the attention of having a daughter with an illness. And people would, like, you know what I mean? Like, be all over her and be like, oh, my gosh, we feel so sorry for you. And basically, if her daughter's sick, she gets attention for her daughter being sick and also support. They got a house, they got money, they were in charities. I think she was in the Sick Kids Foundation, all these things. And her mom had her in a wheelchair, so she wasn't allowed to, she wasn't able to walk or she was told not to walk in front of people. And she was in the wheelchair for so much that her body was like, um, like I think she had like um, atrophy where your muscles, if you don't use their muscles, they become very weak and kind of shrink. And but she was able to walk like it was all a, a fake. And her mother did this to her from a very, very young age. I think I think possibly infancy and all the way up till she was about, I think, 18 or something like that. 18. She was 18. But her mother also lied to Gypsy. So Dee Dee was also lying to Gypsy about Gypsy's age. So she made Gypsy believe she was younger than she was. I think by the time she was 18, she would have had the opportunity to, if she believed to, to get up and go and leave the house and move and get away from her mother. But Dee Dee made Gypsy believe that she was like younger. I think she made her believe she was a few years younger. Like she was, when she was 18, she made her believe that she was like 14. I, I'm not sure exactly the details, but that's basically to summarize it. So not only that she made the child pretend she was sick, she also got medication and fed the girl medication and stuff like that. Um, she she apparently was physically abusive to her. Um, at one point, Gypsy, um, I'm not sure what age, but Gypsy just couldn't take it anymore. The mother abusing her and controlling her. She was not allowed to have friends. She was not allowed to talk to people. She was not doing anything because, I mean, hey, they got to keep up this facade. If she talks to people, she might people let people know. Every time a doctor started to get suspicious, they would just jump to a different doctor or not go to that doctor anymore. And I think at one point, Gypsy did actually pull out a gun on her mother and fired. But the gun jammed or it didn't have bullets or something. I don't know. It, it didn't work out. But she actually attempted to kill her mother before her and her boyfriend did it again so there was this was so she's in jail for the ex second attempt on her, um executing her mother tried to end her mother's life because she was going to get away she wanted to get away so basically her story that it was so stressful it was overwhelming her mother was abusive mother was trolling but a part of her really did believe she was also sick but a part of her also didn't believe she was also sick it gets really fuzzy and cloudy at when she realized that she wasn't realized that it was all a hoax and it was all whatever. Yeah, that story was crazy. It, it It's intense. So she went to jail for, okay, so, okay, so she tried to hurt her mother when she was younger. I'm not sure how old, but she was younger. 
then later, so there got to a point where she knew she wasn't sick at all. And this was really all a scam. Mind you, this is where it gets kind of tricky because she could always walk and she knew she could always walk, but her mother kept her in a wheelchair and made her feel like she couldn't walk. And her muscles did get, I believe, atrophied where then it was become difficult to walk, but not because she had an illness. So it's almost like from what I'm understanding, it's like she kind of, she always knew this was a fake. And people said, well, why didn't she ever like tell the doctor or secretly tell somebody like my mom is faking this or mom's faking this? Well, we got to add into the level of mind control and the abuse or whatever that her mom was doing or whatever. But then again, it gets to a point where she's older. She doesn't know she's older, but she's just older, like more mature. And she gets a boyfriend. How how, How she gets a boyfriend? Online. She never met this. She starts talking to this guy online. So I guess her monitor, her mother monitor, but didn't monitor her that well. And she gets a boyfriend online. And apparently she started telling the boyfriend about how horrible her life was and how, how, how horrible and how their mother and she wishes her mother would die. And the boyfriend's like, I'll do it. Like, she's like, I would, I would love if you do this. <laughs> and he's like, I'm in. So they do. We don't need to go into the graphic days of they do, but basically he comes to her house. This is her boyfriend, but they've only met online. They never met in person. And he, she gives him her address, comes to her house. They execute her mother. And then while her mother's body is in the house, not her mother. I don't know me being a, empath empathy here (laughs) you will see that sometimes empathy does not mean that you constantly feel sorry for them and give them excuses empathy means that you could just because you can understand or feel the feelings of what somebody's feeling doesn't mean that you still can't decide yourself whether it's right or wrong like I can understand why she's upset I can feel those feelings but I don't agree with them or justify see they're justified so she so she call, gets her boyfriend, gets him over to the house. They her mother they ex they they hurt the mother. The mother's not living anymore. They this is where I'm like I found it interesting. Her mother they stayed in the house after this happened to their mother. So after they did this to the mother. They didn't like run and be like, oh, my God, what did we do? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And like take off. And then, you know, it would be like a a chase or something. No, they stayed in the house and they had sex. They had sex. (laughs) They hung out. They (laughs) they did. Now, Gypsy articulates that she was high on drugs at this time, that her mother she had gotten opiates for one of the illnesses that her mother fictitiously created and that doctors gave. And so she was addicted to opiates at that time. So she says that she was like, it was a time where she was addicted. She admits to doing this. So she doesn't deny doing this crime. She doesn't deny it. She doesn't deny asking the boyfriend to do it. She doesn't deny, but it almost feels like she's saying Look, that I think this girl is quite intelligent. That's what I think. I think she's quite intelligent. I do think there was a level of control, absolutely. Um, but some things are just, I just question some things. Now, I haven't watched the documentary. I haven't watched the documentary and I don't think I'm going to because the documentary tells a story from one particular side. I would watch a documentary that's completely neutral and just like facts. So I don't really care to watch a documentary that's really one sided, maybe for interest purposes. But I already have my own feelings of this individual. So I'll tell you I'll tell you right about right off the bat. My opinion is. I think I think this this gypsy lived a horrible life. Horrible. I think what her mom did to her it's horrible. I think it's 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 physically horrible, but the psychological horror of it is is just it's just it's just ill. And I think there's some opinions that gypsy even as a child 
might have been a bit in on it in a sense because she got gifts, she got presents, she got parties, she got all this attention and all those kind of things. Sure. Let's say she was. She was the child. So who is the adult in this situation? Oh, yeah. So I feel like even if she was a bit in on it, even if she was like, you know, kind of loving the rewards, I feel like there's a, there was an adult that should be guiding this child in the right way to be like, this is not how you gain attention. This is not how you do that. But her mother was also a problem. So you know what I mean? So the adult was not teaching the child any good ways. So, and I, I, I wouldn't, you know, children are responsible for some behaviors, but something like that, where it's out of, not out of their control. She's not driving herself anywhere. She's not paying the bill. She's not doing something. So I absolutely do not think that she deserved this behavior. I think this behavior was horrible. Her mother was absolutely horrible. The calculation <laughs> that I find with Gypsy is rather interesting. I mean, there's the, you know, people who have been in abusive relationships and they make these plans to get out and they, th they think like that. But I'm not judging. I'm just saying like my opinion, my opinion, I just get this feeling. It was, it was a very, um, out of anger, out of frustration, out of, I want to do my own thing. You know what I mean? I think that drives it because she does speak about how she loved her mother and that she, she understood, she feels like her mother was ill like mentally ill. She doesn't quite see her mother as an evil person. She sees that her mother was ill and that her mother should have some sympathy and that she made a choice that wasn't a good choice because she felt, you'll hear her, limited in her resources. But if she had, I feel like if she had access to get a boyfriend online, whether she was psychologically limited with her resources, so she has access to people online. She chooses a boyfriend who's going to, who then they make a plan together to hurt her mom. So her physical resources weren't that limited. Her physical resources weren't that limited. She had more access she had a lot of, she had access to physical resources. Her psychological resources might have been limited. So her thought process of like, how I can get out of this, how can I call for help, who can I talk to might have been limited. But I just suspect there was just a lot more anger, hate, you know, wanting to get back at someone, just wanting to destroy something then and then I need I'm trying to like survive. Oh, so let me also set this up. Okay, so why I'm talking about Gypsy today, it's not just because I wanted to talk about Gypsy. But like I said, I've been following the story. I have my own feeling of the story, my own perspective, and whatever, which I kind of shared. And then she was released out of jail. And as she was released, she, she fell in love in jail, got married in jail, in pr not in jail, in prison. She, she fell in love in prison. So some, somebody wrote to her like a, a, a I don't want to call, I mean, a fan and a gentleman started writing to her in prison. They fall in love in prison. She, they get married while in prison. Then when she was released out of prison, she went to live with him. She was, you know, posting, she was being on social media, she's doing podcasts and interviews and everything, which that I don't mind. I find some people were judging her like, oh my gosh, how you per like, um, gaining from the tragedy that she did. I guess that's a interesting thing, but I feel the person who's been incarcerated for whatever, good, bad, we agree, we don't agree, whatever. The per the reason she was incarcerated and she was incarcerated at a pretty young age. So a lot of her adult life, she's been incarcerated. And again, previously before her killing her mother, she was living in a, a type of prison um, with that. So she has a very you know, I want to say a person who hasn't had much opportunities to be a productive working citizen independent in life. And so I don't mind that she's doing podcasts. I think that's a way of income. I, you know, if somebody could say, well, she's profiting. I'm like, well, she's got to, she's got to feed herself. She's got to do stuff, do whatever. She has to use the skills that she has, whatever. I'm not, I'm not going to judge that. I'm not going to, I obviously I commented, I'm not going to judge that. 
But anyway, so she met this man in, not, she didn't meet him in jail. He wrote to her while she was in jail. Mind you, it was a man <laughs> that she, she had, when she was living with her mother, it was a man that she met online. See the patterns? See the patterns here? She met a man online, convinced him to kill her mother. He kills her mother. They date for like half a second after that. They go to jail. They break up. You can have relationships in jail, right? Correspondence, kind of. I don't know. It's pretty difficult. But she... She's done with him. She's just like, I, that, that guy has this. She's done with that guy. So I, it's interesting. She, she didn't know him at all. She meets him online. That's the first time that they hook up. Again, if she was that isolated, my questions are, I'm not, my questions are, what makes me think, if you're that isolated, that sheltered, that controlled by your mother, which again, I think she was, but sometimes the mother wasn't wealthy because she was able to contact a man and even, even plot murder, <laughs> plot and commit murder. Anyways, he went to jail. She went to jail. In jail, again, she's contacting another man, plotting a marriage. They get married. They, she gets out of jail. She moves in with him. Now I learned through the grapevine that when you're released from jail, you can't live with you, you. They won't release you to like a partner or whatever, something like that. There's some, according to her parole or her probation or her after jail responsibilities. Um, her after jail responsibilities, like penalties that she wouldn't be able to live with her partner. That would be one of the stipulations in her release. But being married she would be able to live with her partner and she doesn't have to live in a halfway house or anything like that. She can basically just go from jail straight to an independent life and then do her reporting or whatever she has to do. Um, if she was married, she comes out, she starts doing all these things. She's a social media girly. She's doing all these things and now they're getting a divorce. So when I heard she divorces him now, people who get married quick and divorce, nah, I'm not, I'm not going to judge like, and you know, I'm a, like, it, there's, there's a lot of things, right? <laughs> um, but it's just interesting that here it looks like a man has helped her out of something and then she's moved on. That's what it seems to me, but I'm open to hear the story. I also question the man that would want to start a relationship so quickly and so intently with a woman who, not because she's in jail, just because she's in jail doesn't mean she can't be in, somebody can't love her for whatever she did. That's not it. But knowing the circumstance, he was like a fan and knowing the circumstances of why she was in jail and how it was a partner. And so understanding that, you know, if I was in love with her and I, and I, and I wrote to her in correspondence, I'd be concerned for her mental health. Like, is she, I, w I would want to know that she's comfortable to be like, she's mentally stable to be with a partner and, and I would help her through that, help her through the therapy and all those kind of things, like take it slow. So I really question somebody who would put that with her, like, like could put that to her. For me, intuitively, I had some questions way before she got out of jail. During her trial, it just it just always intuitively I felt something. Again, like I explained to you guys, again, I'm not the only one who has this pain. I'd explained that her resources weren't that limited. The more your lim your resources are limited, the more you're gonna make irrational, you know, more um irrational and more um Animal, I don't want to say animalistic, but like fight or flight decisions. It's me or you type of thing. The more somebody's resources are limited, but it usually goes in stages, right? There's always every minute of every second and every day, you do always have a choice. It's when people take those opportunities away from you, you have less choice and less choice, but you always have an internal soul choice. You have a choice on how you can conduct yourself. Maybe you're 
you, you, somebody locks you in a house, so you don't have the choice to leave. You, you can't, but you can conduct yourself on how you feel about the situation, how you going to handle the situation. And those get harder and harder to do the less you have, like the, when you get to like almost zero resources, as in like food, water, you know, your basic needs aren't being met, your resource, your irrationality and your fight or flight, it's me or you, we're going to come. But I was like, this girl has resources. Like if she could plot murder with somebody on the internet, my gosh, <laughs> you know, I'm a mom. I have kids. I have a, I have a child. <laughs> As for being a child, her resources are limited for what an adult can do. And also because I have to be mindful for this child. So I have to, resources are limited. But in her age range, she has all the resources there that she can have. She could get up and eat food when she wants. She can get up and have a snack. She can go around. The, like she could do certain things within her, her age restriction. But if I were to remove food and water and all those things in her life, then yeah, but there's always she gypsy had resources. I don't see that they were that limited. So I don't see the it's me or you type of thing. And again, I'm not a psychologist. So I understand there's some psychology, psychological, you get some psychological things, but she seems to was in the position where she could psychologically plan and plot a murder <laughs> and then rid away with the other person. Okay, so here she goes. So I had that thought. And then here we are, a situation where she is, it's seemingly, I'm getting the feeling that she used this gentleman to get herself in a position that she needed to be. And now she's done with him now that she's in this position. So I'm seeing a pattern of behavior here. They were all very, very nice. How can anyone be mean to you? I don't know. I mean, um, I had did some international interviews last night. And one of the, the questions was like, how do you feel yeah. now that you're getting all this attention? Um, you know, but, you know, you're a murderer. Oh, my so God. like she just flat out said it. it was a lady from the UK. And I'm kind of like, OK, oh. and, and everybody in the room just like jumped up and was like ready to like, am I, you know, find or am <laughs> yeah. I OK? Yeah. And they were freaking out for me. And I'm like, no, no, guys, I got this. Like, it's something yeah. that I'm going to have to address because it's always in my comments like why are we glorifying a murderer and this and that and the other and um you know see even comments like that where she's saying that the woman came to her and it was an interview and was like okay how do you feel even though you're a murderer okay she's convicted of being a murderer like she she is <laughs> like she is like I get like part of me understands that she's saying like she felt, you know, it hurts to hear that, but I don't quite understand what the offensiveness of the lady who said that. I mean, is there a nice way to say it? I mean, there there probably is like, OK, it says Gypsy, Gypsy Rose, Alish, Al uh, Alcida Blanchard Anderson is an American woman convicted of second degree murder. You're a murderer. Like you are a murderer. Like <laughs> the jury has collectively agreed. <laughs> the law has been laid that you are a murderer. You ask you you part you are a murderer. Right. Okay, but the second degree is the equivalent to sec to assist accessory to murder in that charge like why we mentioned words to murder murder is the word murder 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 oh my god i was gonna play a sound effect but i think it was really offensive <laughs> so i find there's some deflecting there like she's trying to really distance herself from it you know maybe it's like she's so she she hasn't lived she hasn't come to live with that thought in her head yet oh sorry i didn't go back to share she hasn't come to live with that thought in her head. So she's distancing it. It's like, I, like maybe at her, in her dream, she's like, I can't believe I did that. I just feel distant. So sure. I'm, you know, sure. I'm just saying like, yeah, you could distance, honey. You could distance. I, like, but you are like, let's, let's, like, uh, you are. So, okay. yeah. All right. Okay. Gypsy Rose. Blanchard files temporary restraining order. 
amid divorce from husband. Gypsy Road Blanchard files for divorce from her husband, Ryan Anderson, on April 8th. Gypsy Rose Blanchard has filed a temporary restraining order against estranged husband, Ryan Anderson. Court documents obtained by People Show. Attorneys for ben Blanchard filed the restraining order in the 17th Judicial Court in the parish of La Forche, L.A. on April 8th. People confirmed Blanchard filed for from Anderson, a, Louis a Louisiana special education teacher. He's a special education teacher. Per the documents, Blanchard is also requesting Anderson to pay interim and long-term spousal support. Hmm. Okay. Because Blanchard is in need and defendant has ability to pay and she's not at fault for the dissolution of the marriage. Oh my God. It just makes her look, I don't know, like that's interesting. I mean, okay, so yeah, she's in in neat. Is she? She's in neat. She's. I mean, okay, so if they never got married, she would be in like a halfway house or you know on a, like government assistance, trying to get her life together, type of thing. Um, so living with him, she was able to live more comfortably and have things. And so divorcing from him, it is going to change her dynamic of her life. Um, wow. Okay. And defendant has the ability to pay and she is not at fault for the dissolution of the marriage. I question how, what kind of person he is too. I, ha I, I wonder, <laughs> I would question what kind of person he was to her. And if he was really that good to her, was he controlling? Was he, that did he try to use her for fame? I question how healthy the relationship was on both ends. Um, she is also asking the court to deny spousal support to him from her per the documents. Okay. Okay. Blanchard is uh Blanchard announces announced her separation from her hundred on March twenty eighth. <coughs> three months after her early prison release. In the days after her separation, she was spotted with her ex-fiance, Ken Urkel. The pair got lunch and matching tattoos together. I mean, I'm not a psychologist and I'm not trying to be one, but I, it doesn't shock to me that she might have some ways to go in life to navigate relationships. And to make those big decisions, I mean, she's at the age where you would be making those decisions, but there's so much. So I don't think, I don't think it's, I, I think it makes sense that she would be a person who would have difficulty navigating relationships. Um, in the days after her suspension, she was spotted with her ex-fiance. They are not back together. Urker's mother, Rian, Ra Raina William, previously told people they're very cool. Ken is just being a supportive friend to her, and that's it. I actually honestly believe that. I believe that they might not actually be back together. I think she would, she's going to, I suspect that she would move on to someone else and continue trying to work her way through society. Society, not work her way, like, but like, um, be a person in society and have relationships and have breakups and all those kind of things. Okay. I actually have, my suspicion is, is that the relationship wasn't healthy. I, I, also, I question a lot somebody who would want to marry someone so fast after they've been through that. Like, I, I, I wonder, it just, it just seems like if you really love somebody, you would say, okay, let's be together, but, you know, let's take your time and make sure that your whatever, I don't want to impede on your rehabilitation into society and what you're you're doing I don't want to do that and I also don't believe that I am just love is going to what's going to make it so I question that so I don't know I you know to say like oh it I think I, I I'm picking up there's more of a pattern with choosing people to help her get out of situations or get in situations but she's also choosing very terrible people um I think it goes both ways I think I think that's interesting